right, welcome everyone. Today I'm going to show you some considerations that you may want to look at when you buy a brand new bike and you're wanting to motorize it. I've um, got a brand new 29 inch bike here. Still got some packing material on it. Now this one here I'm going to uh, I'm going to do something unique with it. It's a 29 inch bike like I said. I'm going to be putting a 26 inch uh, wheel set on it so I'm going to be ditching the 29 inch wheels. If you do go with a 29 inch frame you're going to want to put a larger sprocket on it. Your standard uh, sprocket is 44 tooth. You may want to bump up to a 48 maybe a 52 sprocket. The larger wheel is going to require a bigger sprocket otherwise you're going to put a lot of stress on your clutch. Um, so we've, we've got our, our bike more or less ready here. I've removed the, uh, the front wheel, the handlebars, the seat, all that good stuff. One thing you do want to think about with your, uh, your bike, your fenders. If you're going to have your fenders on it, you want to make damn good and sure that throughout the life of the bike that you always check your fenders. Make sure that these little mounting tabs here do not break. If this was to break and the fender slip into the wheel while you're going uh, at speed, you're, you're going to crash. It's not a matter of uh, maybe or might, it's a matter of you will crash. The, the, the steel fender gets between the wheel and the road and you're gone. So if you're going to run fenders, Make sure that your, uh, your, uh, your mounts here are always in good shape. They're prone to uh, vibration and cracking, particularly on the rear fender here. Uh, this particular one here, I'm going to be removing the fenders. For setting it up, with all brand new bikes, uh, I, I think someone in China is real happy about how tight they get the, uh, the the crown nut here, the top nut here on the, the steering tube. You can barely turn the front bearings. They they've got the uh, got this just way too tight. I use a piece of wood. And about a half a turn normally gets you where you need to be. You do want to go ahead and loosen this up here. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and do it. You've got your washer. You want to loosen this up and check that the bearings have some grease in it. I can see the bearing here. There is some grease on it. Putting a good amount of grease on both the top and the lower bearing. Now, if you're going to be putting different forks on, obviously you wouldn't. Uh, be doing this here, but it's not that difficult once you're at this uh, stage here, once you've gotten this loose, to go ahead and change the forks if you want to put on a set of suspension forks. I get this to where it's snug, to where you've still got uh, pretty uh, loose, free turning of it, and there's no wobble. So you can't take the forks and uh, have any play there. You've got the slot in the washer. You have a slot here on the threaded steering tube. Push that down. And you're going to get this tight. 
here and then take a wrench and just give it just a little bit of a turn to snug it up. Your front wheel that you're going to use, you want to check and uh, see that the bearings have grease in them. I can see inside the dust cap that they do. It's fairly simple. You remove the, the axle nut, you loosen up the the locking nut and then there's a cone nut behind it. Quite often you can just get away with taking a 17 millimeter wrench, backing this nut off, of course holding the the locking nut on the other side on it, backing it off enough to where you can expose the bearing, put some grease in there. Like I said, from the factory they don't put enough grease on the the bearings of the wheels. Uh, working our way backwards, you've got the, the water bottle mount here, these studs here. If you're going to be mounting a two-stroke or a four-stroke, you're going to want to grind this nut off. And I'll, I'll give you a better shot here. Okay, you're going to want to grind or cut off even the washer, there's a washer that protrudes. You've got the, the Allen head here, a washer that's loose, and then a washer that was welded onto the frame. You're going to want to grind that washer that's welded onto the frame off. What you can do is take a hacksaw and cut through here, cutting through the screw, cutting the washer off, getting the hacksaw as close to the, uh, the seat post tube here as you can cutting it off and then taking a file or a grinder or you can use I have a cutting wheel on my angle grinder here And I use my angle grinder to uh, cut this off flush and then I'll come back with a hand file and file it smooth and then be sure and hit it with some paint. If you're going to be mounting a two-stroke on most of your beach cruisers you're fine with leaving the chain guard on. If not you're going to want to remove the chain guard Uh, if you're going to be running a four stroke, you're going to want to remove the chain guard. With the chain guard, you've got a screw here above the, uh, the bottom bracket, and then you've got a screw back by the rear wheel. I remove the rear screw on the chain guard. If you're going to be mounting a, uh, a four stroke on it, you're going to be replacing the, the crank and the arms here, so you need to remove it. I would recommend for even for a two stroke installation, go ahead and remove the chain guard. Go ahead and remove the uh, go ahead and remove the crank arm enough where you can get get to the bearings and go ahead and uh, hit the bearings with some grease. This here is reverse threads, so you want to turn this this locking nut here clockwise to loosen it.
you've got the locking washer that has a, uh, a tooth in it that goes into the groove. And the cone nut here, again this is uh, reverse threads. And they did manage to get some grease on the bearing from the factory. Like I said, we're pulling this off and we've got a uh, three-piece crank with a wider arm so the, the, the crank arms don't hit the motor because we're going to be putting a four-stroke on this one. Okay, as well, if you're going to be putting a four-stroke on it, you're going to be putting a smaller crank sprocket on it, chain ring on it. Uh, so you're going to need to shorten your chain. To shorten the chain, you need a, a chain breaker tool. And I'm just going to pull this through the wheel here. This tool here just pushes on one of the pins. you want to drive the pin all the way through the, the link on the inside but not completely push it out. That way it'll stay in place. And there you go. Like I said, once you put your smaller uh, chain ring on the front, you will then take a number of uh, links out, break it again, and then put it back together when you're ready to roll on the bike. Either way, if you're going to be running a two-stroke or a four-stroke, you will need to remove the rear wheel. As well, you will need to remove the rear fender you're going to need to cut the rear fender for the chain. That way the chain will not rub into the, uh, the rear fender. Uh, what I do, I take my hand, go like that. I go about maybe eight, eight inches up from the bottom. I cut in about maybe an inch here and then all the way down. So I, I would cut that piece there. To get the rear wheel off, first thing you will do is remove the clamp on the brake arm. Then we need to remove, then we need to loosen up the axle nuts. Quite often as well, uh, someone in China is so happy to get these things way too tight. So you'll want to break out the big wrenches. So you'll want to break out the big wrenches. You need a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screw at the bottom of the fender.
When you put it back on, be sure and put some Loctite on it. And then we've got the top. bolt here that holds on the fender. Loosen the nut with a 10 millimeter. We take the fender off. Like I said, I will come in and you've got the tab here, the mounting tab for the lower fender mount there. I will cut along a straight line there all the way up I do the old Hawaiian uh, sign there, about that far up. Cut it there. I'll cut in here to get my mark and then cut all the way up there. You can use 10 snips or uh, an uh, angle grinder with a cutting wheel. Be careful no matter what you do. Here is part of the reason why we've got some problems with a motorized application on the fender. The, the support bracket here uh, of course, it, it, it's made only to be a pedal-ridden bike, and the, the, the engineering of it uh, has that in mind. Uh, quite often as well in transit, uh, in manufacture and transit, this tab here gets bent, and uh, you, you, you bend it. And of course, with uh, motorizing it, you get some flex in the steel here. If you get everything real tight here and you get too much, get a lot of tension here, this here will get worked back and forth, back and forth and break and uh, if both of these break at the wrong time uh, this here slips on the under the wheel you will crash so if you decide to keep your fenders on watch this bracket right here like your butt depends upon it okay this application I'm not going to be using the fender so if anybody needs some good fenders <laughs> click on the link below Okay, so we've got the bike pretty well stripped down here. We're ready to go, ready to start motorizing it. Look on my channel down below. Check out some of my installation videos. I'll show you what you need to do to go ahead and build your bike up. But now we've got the bike torn down. We're ready to start the assembly process. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe. Take care.